Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. This is Logan Burgess. Today is May 2nd. We saw the market snap back a little bit for soybeans, but for corn, it ended up trading down 7.5 cents for the July contract at 4.99.5. Looks like corn, for the most part, selling off today due to uh, incre well improved weather outlook when yep. it comes to planting. Looks like farmers that have been uh, delayed here in the last week will have an opportunity to catch up on their planting here in the weeks to come. But soybeans, really yesterday we saw significant damage done yep. to the charts. And today we got a little bit of a bounce here in the front months. But technically, when we look at the November contract, yeah. has anything changed? Yeah, Cody, I think it has here, uh, given yesterday's move. Take a look here at a daily chart of that November contract. You can see here the black trend line that's now dashed is the trend line that we've been following here uh, since about February. This really has dictated the movement of this November contract and a break below it is what we've been waiting for uh, as a pretty strong sell signal on this market. A break of a trend line like this indicates that uh, the trend is changing here. And the one thing I liked about today's move as far as confirmation was that this market on two occasions tried to take a run at the trend line. What once acted as support is now acting as strong resistance. Um, so looking at the market here and looking at the RSI, as you can see, not significantly oversold yet. In my mind, still some downside here in the bean market. You know, in the last couple of weeks, I've been talking a little bit about the fact that we had been in a very strong bullish trend. Yeah. And I had given warnings to some of our producers, some of our traders, uh, that you don't necessarily want to be selling into strength here in a bullish market. Yeah. With the fact that the uh, trend line has broken now, would you consider selling into rallies, uh, especially if we, if we are yeah. able to bounce back up to the highs uh, that we've seen in the last couple yeah. of weeks? Do you think that's a selling opportunity now? Uh, how, how would you I, I think absolutely that would be a selling opportunity. I guess in my mind, I, I wouldn't even necessarily need to see a strong bounce back to take uh, some risk off the table for the new crop. I think this is a great opportunity, or, or not a great opportunity, but confirmation that the trend we've seen here since February is changing. That's a great opportunity to uh, sell some bushels either into the cash market or use the futures market. So I guess if it was my farm, I'd be taking a serious look at, at pricing uh, 10 or 20% of the new crop production here uh, with this break of the November contract. Uh, and with a very large acreage number that could be getting larger for soybeans, keep that in mind. So both those factors combined, it's kind of an alignment, I guess, of technicals and fundamentals. Uh, and for those reasons, you know, as I said, I'd be using this as a pricing opportunity. It's been a pricing opportunity that, that we here have been waiting for, for for quite some time on the November contract. Absolutely. Now let's switch some attention over to wheat, as this is a major topic here in the last couple days, really since uh, since uh, January. The, the weather in, in the Southern Plains Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma has been uh, very dry and the crop has suffered significantly. Yep. And it looks as though the temperatures going from Sunday to Wednesday next week are going to be in the triple digits, uh, really kind of scorching an already damaged uh, crop here. Yep. Now, uh, we know that uh, wheat has kind of international issues. It has uh, domestic issues as well. Uh, I know that there were some events going on in Ukraine. Uh, how are you uh, incorporating that? How are you uh, synthesizing that information? Yeah, I guess, you know, the big news this morning, Cody, was that two helicopters were shot down in Ukraine. So the big concern right now is that uh, this situation, which is, is relatively at a state of equilibrium right now, uh, is going to get out of control and ultimately impact the ability of Ukraine to effectively export wheat onto the global market. I think that with today's news, I, I don't think we're there yet. We saw a large sale uh, from the Egyptians go to Ukraine. So I think that's a pretty strong piece of evidence that logistics have not been affected with the unrest in Ukraine at the moment. Obviously that could change, but for the moment, I guess I wouldn't look at that to be a big contributor to a rally in the Chicago contract. More of a concern for me right now is the premium that U.S. wheat carries over Black Sea wheat, trading 10 to $15 per ton higher. So I think that issue needs to be resolved, I guess, before I would look for unrest in Ukraine to push it another leg higher. Looking at Kansas City wheat, though, a little bit of a different story uh, based on the weather that we've seen. Absolutely. And when you look domestically, this is the situation, actually. Uh, when you look at uh, Kansas City wheat, you'll notice that that high that we had back there in March, yeah. uh, we've been able to move up past that. For, for uh, Chicago wheat, that's a different story. We're still in that battleground. Right. Uh, but for Kansas City wheat, we're just rocketing higher, and you can really see that in the spread here. 
uh, you'll notice that that uh, it's almost a dollar thirteen cents. Uh, Kansas City wheat for the July contract is almost a dollar and thirteen cents higher than the Chicago wheat contract. Really, what we're seeing there is serious concern uh, that the Kansas City wheat crop is uh, is kind of beyond repair here. Right. We did see Informa slash the winter wheat crop estimate by 120 million bushels here today. I, I think with that. Uh, considering the fact that we also had the Kansas City wheat tour uh, go through that area, yeah. uh, voicing serious concerns on yield, uh, it looks as though this uh, Kansas City wheat crop or this Kansas City wheat prices uh, could continue yeah. to show uh, relative strength on the wheat market uh, yeah. compared to Chicago. Yeah, well, it could make for a very interesting open Sunday night here for, I think, soybeans and wheat in particular. Uh, on Monday as well, we're going to be getting crop progress updates, so that could dictate the corn market. If you want to take a look at these markets for yourself Sunday night, visit us over at GrainHedge.com. You can take a demo of our trading platform that you see here on Grain TV and see live quotes from Chicago as the markets open in the overnight session. Cody, last order of business here on a Friday afternoon. A lot of action this week in the futures market. What went on here in the cash market? What are you seeing right now for spot basis? Well, really, we saw strong basis improvements for corn and for soybeans, but there's two things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, one is the fact that we rolled from May to July. When I calculated these changes, what I did is I took the cash price on average across the U.S. I held it to the July contract just to mitigate the effects of that roll. Yeah. Even after kind of uh, accounting for that roll, we did see corn uh, basis across the U.S. on average trading up three cents, and for soybeans it was trading up seven cents. Uh, kind of a key item to note here is we are going into planting, and obviously this has slowed down the cash movement across the U.S. It looks as though we're getting a little bit of a planting bump here in basis. Right. Uh, on average across the U.S. we saw ethanol prices or ethanol basis uh, improve two and three quarter cents. We saw corn along the river improve one and three quarter cents. Uh, really, the strongest basis though yeah. was beans along the river improving nine and three quarter cents. So there is basis movement out there, and to keep an eye on it, we do have a cash market intelligence package here. Uh, if you haven't taken a look at it and you are an existing trading customer, or you're just uh, wanting to see what what's available out there for marketing right. tools, give us a call at eight seven seven four seven two. 4607 and we can set you up with a demo there. Yeah, absolutely. If you're going to get out in the field here this weekend planting, remember we do have a great mobile trading app available now at Grain Hedge. It's available on the iPhone, iPad, Android, or tablet. If you take a demo right now, you'll get two weeks of free live quotes out of Chicago to keep an eye on things uh, in the planter here this weekend into next week. As I said, visit us at GrainHedge.com if you want to take a look at that or give us a call at the office 877-472-4607. Thanks a lot for joining us here on a Friday. We'll see you back here on Monday.